What's going on, Chuckleheads? I am Carlo Guadagnino. This is the Dingo Talk Alumni Tour. My guest this week is Ricky Perlman, class of 1985. Ricky's going to tell us everything from how he got to Bethany, uh, which is a great story, to the concerts and whatnot that he was a part of here at Bethany and what he's doing now. So without further ado, this is Ricky Perlman. Chuckleheads, I am Carlo Guadagnino. This is the Dingo Talk Alumni Tour. My guest this week is Ricky Perlman, class of 1985. Uh, Ricky, thank you for being with me today. Thank you very much for having me. We're going to do this the same way we do every show. You're going to tell us how you made it from Miami to uh, Bethany, and then we're going to talk about the academics, maybe some social things that you did, and uh, we'll take a break, come back. Talk about comps and now and then what you're doing, what you've done since you left Bethany. So, how does a guy from Miami end up in Bethany, West Virginia? It was all a mistake. I was supposed to end up at West Liberty, but uh, I, my dad and I went ahead and we took a trip. We were going to go up to West Liberty, take a look at the campus, and my dad rented a car and went right past West Liberty kept going around and around and around and around and around. And eventually we get to the top of the mountain and there is Bethany College. My dad looks at it and says, I love the college. You're going to school here. Forget about West Liberty. You're going to school here. And so this is the first visit. That was the first visit. And what happened was he met with John Cunningham. He met with Dave Waddle, who at the time was the admissions director. Uh, we had about a two, two and a half hour meeting. My dad, you know, loved it. The, John Cunningham was very receptive. Mr. Waddle was very receptive on one condition. And that one condition was I needed to maintain a 2.0 average. If I went below a 2.0 average, they could send me home at any time. And it never happened. And it never happened. So academically, how did Bethany go for you? Bethany went very, very well for me. Uh, there was a professor by the name of Howard Seiler. I took an education class. And during the course of reading some material, Dr. Seiler discovered I had a learning disability. Basically, we nipped it in the bud. He was able to teach me how to study and how to be prepared for anything that, that comes up academically. And what was the what was the strategy? What was the program that he that he gave you? Well, the, the the program was was that for the first week and a half, the tutors that they had uh, assigned for me were going to read everything to me, and then the, the following week, I would read half, and the tutors would read half, and then by the third week, what would happen is I would do everything, and they would teach me what sections that I needed to to look for okay. and when preparing for class notes and that stuff. And they basically, they work with me and work with my disability and it worked out great for me. So you went from a sub 2.0. 1.4 to a 3.6. You graduated Bethany with a 3.6. That is correct, yes sir. And that's all because to the admissions counselor, Mr. Waddle, and John Cunningham, they took that chance and said, yeah, we'll bring you in. But this Yes, is it, it was because of the fact that they took that chance. And also what, what happened was I was lucky enough to have a professor that basically believed in me, in, in Howard Seiler. So, and, and what happens with your major? What, what, why, you, were, you were a communications major, but it's... No, I was originally a physical education major. Okay. But because of, you know, the fact that I was going to be in the, in, in the entertainment business, I changed my major to an interdisciplinary major, which was a combination of communications, theater, and business. And, you know, that was all, you know, because of the fact that, you know, I, I love music and I wanted to, to be ready for when the time came, I would be able to basically deal with anything. And boy, did I learn lessons. Well, lessons. So 
let's let's talk about something that came up at Bethany. You're you're in your room. In over I'm in my room. I am practicing. I used to practice an hour and a half a day, six days a week. Singing. Singing, getting ready for the for the demo. Mm -hmm. And what ended up happening, a couple of guys happened to hear me, Mike Mintel, Charlie Roberts, and they said, you know, you guys, you sound pretty good. I said, thank you. He goes, we want you to enter a talent show. We want you to win a keg of beer. I says, nah, I don't want to do it. They go, come on. You're helping us out. Mm. And you know what? It's going to help you out. So, you know, after like 20 minutes, I said, okay, I'll go, I'll go ahead and I'll do it. So that talent show was like five days later on, on a Thursday at the barn. Show starts at eight o'clock. I asked them to please let me be the opening act so I can do my part and leave. Never happened. Hmm. 750 rolls around and it's like a herd of people just keep coming into the barn and coming into the barn and coming into the barn and soon the place was packed wall to wall. And I said, I'm not doing this, forget about it. I'll deal with whatever comes about. And Mike and Charlie, they shoved me right in the middle. And at that point I have to sing, I do three songs, place goes crazy. And TV producer from the uh, television station, TV3, mm -hmm. Asked me, he goes, can you do me a favor? Can you go ahead and can you do a TV special? I said, sure. He goes, what do you want to do? He goes, I want to interview you. And I also want you to sing like two or three songs. I says, no problem. So we go ahead, we do the TV show, call my dad. I said, dad, they love me. They love me at this school. And he goes, I knew they were going to love you at this school. And I go, dad, I got one problem. He goes, what's the problem? He goes, you told me not to sing in public. You wanted me to wait for, for that to happen when I released the record. Well, I went ahead and sang anyway. They love me. I think we're going to have to change our plan. I think we're going to have to test to see how good I am or how bad I'm, I am. I go, why don't we do a show at Bethany? He goes, you know what? That sounds like a pretty good idea. So he gives me a set amount of money, which was $1,500. We ended up finding a local group of the other brothers, and we ended up uh, performing the very next year, and we ended up raising fifteen hundred dollars for the women's athletic program, for the field hockey program. Which then rolls into your senior project, which is two shows for the women's well, athletic program. That is correct. It was two shows for the the women's athletic program. And we had to do a bigger area. We weren't just doing Bethany. We were going to be doing Wellsburg, Wheeling Park, every area within a, a 50 mile radius. Mm -hmm. And it ended up uh, three days before that show was supposed to begin. Uh, my conductor calls me 12 o'clock midnight, says, I can't make it. You, Chris and Denny are going to have to learn 17 songs in three days. <clears throat> I said, I can't do it. He goes, no, you're going to have to do it. So with the help of everybody that was, who stayed at our complex, which was uh, McLean, mm -hmm. they stayed up with me. We, we learned the 17 songs, did two shows. We raised the $3,000 and it was a great, it was an unbelievable experience. And then the next day you give a public relations speech. And then I got, then the very, very next day, I give a public relations speech and instead of bailing and asking for an extension i went ahead tried to do the public relations speech it didn't go well professor meets me after class and says you know what anybody that would uh basically take three days learn on entire show mm -hmm. come in and attempt to do a public relations campaign wasn't great but you know what you made the attempt because i can't fail you and he ended up he gave me a passing grade and i was able to graduate from the college. And it was just, I learned that you have to be able to deal with adversity, with things that you don't expect and you have to work with it. And that's what this experience at Bethany taught me. So your social life had to be very interesting once the band thing started going well, because we talked, we talked about how like going into Bubba is going around campus. You didn't go, you didn't go very many places alone. No, I had to have somebody with me and and basically what had to happen was 
you know, it's like my uh, roommates up at McQueen basically were watched me like and took care of me. Basically, they 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 were very important to me, and I owe a lot to them. Bubba's was a good time while you were here. <laughs> it was a great. It was a it was a great time. <laughs> But you couldn't move. It was like wall to wall and that stuff. And I would walk in, and as soon as I walk in, they had Love Potion number uh, Love Potion number nine on the jukebox machine. And everybody would play it. And everybody would play it. And everybody would play it. And uh, the, the thing that was great was in my senior year, the school paid for my last show. I ended up being one of seven bands selected for We're the World Superfest. And that was four days before I was going to be taking my comps and oh my goodness I never even knew I was even going to be on we are the world super fest but thanks to John Graham that's where John Graham ended up getting me you know on that particular show it was a great experience and again I had to deal with adversity and was able to pull it off so what's well, a good that's a great place to pause We'll take a, a little break. I'm going to send it to an alumni, Karen KJ Dunn with Maple Shade Outdoors. If you haven't yet, get on Instagram and follow his Instagram page. It's maple underscore shade dot outdoors. Or like this video, hit subscribe to the channel. It's Dingo Talk. And then hop over to his YouTube channel, Maple Shade Outdoors. Uh, give him a subscri subscribe as well. But this is Ricky Perlman. Class of 1985, I am Carlo Guadagnino, and you're watching the Dingo Talk Alumni Tour. KJ, take it away. What's going on, everybody? This is Kieran Dunn, founder of Maple Shade Outdoors. You're currently watching Dingo Talk with my man, Carlo. If you're anything like me and you're really enjoying this content, you should like and subscribe his page. While you're on YouTube, you should probably just head over and like and subscribe Maple Shade Outdoors. Check out our page, enjoy some videos, some outdoor content. You might as well hop on Instagram, Facebook, follow us, Maple Shade Outdoors. Now that's enough about me. I'm trying to get back and watch the rest of Dingo Talk, so I'll talk to y'all later. What's going on, Chuckleheads? I am Carlo Guadagnino. This is the Dingo Talk Alumni Tour. My guest this week is Ricky Perlman, class of 1985. And before we get into comps, I have a question. Is there any chance we maybe get you back here to do one more show? I would love that opportunity. I, I would love the chance to come back and, and do it one more time. Maybe do it, maybe do it in Hoke Field. Would be an interesting place to do a show. We'll have to talk to the uh the soccer coach and see what he thinks about it. And and maybe the uh the new uh, the new athletic director once they're here. Um but I'm sure there's going to be an alumni group that when they see that, and I'm definitely going to pose the question, why don't we get you back here? So I, I would be interested to see how that develops. Um, but so we left off with, you know, you play a concert and four days later, you're going to take comps. So what was studying like for comps? It was then, very, very hectic because little did I know John Graham goes ahead and uh, talks about me to a gentleman uh, at the Holiday House. And the gentleman at the Holiday House asked me if I would go ahead and do a uh, work, would do a uh, benefit performance for We Are The World Superfest mm -hmm. and be the opening act. I was like, wow, <laughs> you know. Sure. The day before, and this was the day before I was supposed to take written, written comps. Went ahead, we did the show, went very well, and we did the written comps. And you talk about being nervous. Oh my goodness gracious. I was so nervous. It was, it's unbelievable. It's like, and then somebody told me, I guess it was one of my tutors, Susie Lemley told me, he goes, you know this stuff. Just, just go out and just have fun with it. That's the biggest thing that I can tell seniors with the comps, have fun with it. Don't let it, don't let it be a mind game to you. If you just go and you do what you're supposed to do and, and study and be ready for it, it's going to, it'll, it'll happen. So you, so you pass comps. I pass comps. Yes. Celebrate. Yes. 
And then what is the next step after graduation? The next step after graduation was I was supposed to do a second album. Mm -hmm. Two weeks before the second album, my dad passed away. And I needed to make money so that I can go out West. So I ended up getting in the car business and little did I know I was going to fall in love with the car business. And right now I'm working at Napleton Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram. And what my job position is, is that I call customers, confirm appointments for service and try to get them to get into new vehicles, switch into to, to, to vehicles. Then that's how I get paid. And I owe a lot to Steve Ignoski and uh, all of the, the people at Napleton Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram. They're great people to work with. So what made you fall in love with, with being in the car? And where, where did you start? Did you, you started back home then? No, I started, I started in, in um, Broward County okay. at uh, World Ford Pembroke Pines as a salesperson. But for me to survive, I needed to, to deal with the sharks. I couldn't outsell them. Mm -hmm. So I used my interdisciplinary degree and basically talk, you know, decided I was going to get into, I like to call people. I like to talk to people, mm -hmm. call as many people as I can set maybe six, seven, eight appointments a day and bring them in. That's what my job is. And that's what I did. So, so music, is, is it still a part of your life? It's not as much as I want it to be. I wish it was a lot, it was a lot more. Uh, right now, the car business is, that's my life. But I do miss music. Music was, is, it, it was a very important part of my life. And you never, never, ever get rid of the itch. Once a musician, always a musician. And like I said, I want that opportunity. One more show at Bethany. Well, for everybody so you bring back up bethany and that that's there, there's two there's two more questions that i want to ask you uh one as a spectator and a supporter of the of women's sports and the division three why would an athlete want to go to a division three sport or a division three college why because of the fact that they are going to they are going to be given a better chance to, to basically work as, as a team up there. Mm -hmm. when, when you're dealing with division one, they have their set of people and they couldn't care less about the, the second, the third, the fourth team and that stuff. At, when you go to a division three school like Bethany, everybody matters. Everybody matters. It doesn't matter whether it's football, basketball, volleyball, everybody's a close knit, everybody is close knit and everybody's is important for the success of, of the program. That's, that's the difference. So then that leads into, and you've touched on, on a couple of points of why, but in your, in your words, why Bethany, if you're talking to a prospective student or, or parents right now, what are you saying to get somebody here? What am I saying to get them in? I'm saying that if, if you want a great education where the professor is going to care about you and you're not going to be a number. You're not going to be number five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You're, you're, you're Ricky Perlman. We, we want you to succeed and we care about you. Go to Bethany College. If you, if you want to be part of, 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 of 3,000 people, then you go to a bigger college. But with me, I wouldn't trade my education in for nothing. And I love Bethany College and it was the greatest five years of my life and I wouldn't trade it for nothing. And the people and the people you know, are, the are very close to them. Wow. I have some of the closest friends are, are, are graduates of Bethany college, Steve dish, Evelyn Del Cerro, Monica, Peggy Chamberlain, Peggy Hoffman. It goes on and on and on and on and on. They're friends. And I consider them friends for life. Well, Ricky, I want to say thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you very much for having me. Absolutely. I have to send it to the other guy, you know, the other guy in town, Harry Chambers and Chambers General Store. Because if Chambers doesn't have it, you don't need it. It's a proven fact. 
It's also a proven fact if you've never come, if you've come to Bethany and you've never gone to Chambers, you didn't actually come to Bethany. You couldn't have. But this has been the Dingo Talk Alumni Tour. I am Carla Guadagnino, Ricky Perlman class of 1985. Harry Chambers, take it away. You just watched another exciting episode of Dingo Talk, recorded in the secret lair deep in the hills of Bethany, West Virginia. Let me give a shout out to my man Don over at Maple Shade Outdoor. He got some great, he's got some great stuff going on over there on YouTube and Instagram. Please make sure you check him out. Also, now available as promised, we have the second edition Bethany, West Virginia Mushroom Capital of the World t-shirts and our Chambers General Store. If we don't have it, you don't need it t-shirts. Available in all sizes. So make sure you stop by the store for a t-shirt, breakfast sandwich, or sausage biscuits and gravy, and make sure to check out those daily lunch specials. Now back to you, Dingo.